you may be aware of the famous sport tug of war, where both players try to pull the rope in their direction. If the rope is not moving, then a physicist might say the net force on the rope is zero. And what is force? Force is a vector quantity, which means it has a magnitude, that is how strongly you pull the rope, and direction, here the direction of the pull. In fact, any quantity which depends on both magnitude and direction is a vector. There also exist scalar quantities which only have magnitude. Some common examples of scalars are length, mass and temperature. On the other hand, the common examples of vectors are velocity, weight, gravity, thrust, momentum, acceleration, electric field, etc. Vectors provide a natural introduction to the role of mathematics in physics. In general, vectors form a mathematical bridge that enables physicists and engineers to explain a vast majority of natural phenomena and apply mathematical concepts in real life. Mathematicians think of vectors as set of objects which obey a bunch of rules of algebra such as addition, subtraction and multiplication. But a simple geometric definition consists of an arrow representing a vector. Its length depicts the magnitude, and arrowhead points to the vector's direction. It can be either labeled as letters, capped by an arrow, or a boldface letter. Vectors follow different rules of addition. Suppose an ant walks from point A to point C via point B. Then the net displacement given by vector C can be obtained by adding vectors A and B. Similarly, to subtract two vectors, we can add negative of a vector, which is the same vector with opposite direction to the other vector. A vector can be resolved into its components when placed on a rectangular coordinate system. A component is the projection of a vector on an axis. This powerful technique helps us to describe a variety of different real life situations. One example is the plane's location. Given the angle and distance from the airport, one can find the plane is at 81 km east and 200 km north of the airport. Since our real world is three-dimensional, the components of a 3D vector are beneficial in many situations. Let us suppose you are watching this video on your laptop in your room. Then considering any corner of the room as origin, one can describe the laptop's position in terms of x, y and z components of the position vector. Now, while watching this video on your laptop, suppose you bend your knee. The upper leg muscle exerted a certain amount of force on the kneecap via tendons. If we have to find the amount of force by the kneecap on the thigh bone, we can neatly sum up the x components of the force. You might have seen the hanging chains on the roadside or other places. These chains, which are curved due to their weight, are examples of catenary curves. The tension vectors determine the curved shape of the chain. The same principle is applied in freely hanging overhead power lines and also explain the balance of internal forces in an arch which is an example of inverted catenary. Vectors are also used for navigation purposes. Consider the simplified direction of travel from origin to destination that is vector OD. If the direction of the wind is in the direction AD, then utilizing the rules of vector addition, the pilot chooses the direction OA for the journey. As I stated earlier, vectors are not just magnitude and direction but mathematical objects. The mathematical definition of vectors are used to define a path or curve which forms the basis of vector graphics. If we scale up the pixelated version of this logo, then the logo becomes blurred. However, the enlarged vector graphic version is perfectly scalable. The extension of this file type is called .svg which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. Vector graphics are used in PDFs and software like Adobe Illustrator. All the illustrations in this video are made up of vector graphics. In contrast, Adobe Photoshop uses raster graphics. Multiplication of vector is a tricky business and there are two ways to do it. The first method involves two vectors making an angle with each other and their product results in a scalar quantity. It is called a dot product or a scalar product. It is read as a dot b and involves the projections of vector on each other. You can see dot product in action whenever you push a lawnmower. The work done by the force on the lawnmower is given as the dot product of force and displacement. You can also see 
this happening whenever a car is towed by a tow truck. Work done is an important quantity as it relates to the crucial concepts like energy and power. Another way to multiply vectors involves two vectors and the smaller angle between them. Here the product of A and B, read as A cross B, results in a third vector C which is in the direction perpendicular to the plane containing vectors A and B. It is called a vector or cross product. And the most common example is whenever you open a door. The cross product of a position vector and the applied force results in a twisting action on the hinges called torque. You also see cross product in other daily life scenarios. You might have noticed vortices in your tea or coffee after stirring it with a spoon. The water disappearing down the drain hole from a bathroom sink also creates a similar vortex. Similar phenomena is also seen on large scale in atmosphere. A look from space, swirling patterns in clouds is captured during the fusion of warm air and cold air. All these examples of vortices can be mathematically explained by vorticity, which involves the cross product. In the past two centuries, the language of mathematics has enabled us to explain many complicated things simply and thoroughly. One can definitely say vectors have played a huge role in this journey.